Hey there Miata friends, my name is Mike. Welcome back to FM Builds. This is our build series project, Ron. We have a 2003 very stock Miata here behind me. And we're gonna take this car from stock to awesome in this build series. In this particular episode, we're gonna be working on suspension upgrades. So let's check out and see what's in store. If you know anything about Miatas, you know that they are highly praised for their handling prowess right out of the factory. They don't even need suspension upgrades, some might say. We think that it definitely does. And that's because this car, while it does have the factory sport suspension with Bilsteins and slightly stiffer springs compared to some of the previous models, they're worn out, they are tired, they do need to be replaced. And we want this car to perform better than even it was from the factory. So we're here to turn it up to 11 and that requires a little bit of secret sauce. The sauce in question? Well, we've got some upgrades over here on the bench in front of me. So, we're gonna do a little bit of an overhaul of all of the major suspension components of this Miata. We have Fox coilovers, we have upgraded sway bars, I have some ball joints and bolts that will basically upgrade and replace some of the factory components, as well as some end links to make sure that our new components are staying attached and doing their job properly. Let's begin by talking about our Fox coilover system. So these are a bespoke coilover setup that we put together along with Fox Racing. These shocks are actually designed from the ground up in conjunction with the Fox engineers. These aren't from some other platform that we just brought into the Miata world. We did have them do all kinds of testing with us here at our facility for a week on each one of the cars. So we know this is gonna be a great solution because besides being a coilover where we can adjust the ride height using the spring perch, it also has adjustable damping for the shock itself. We also can control a pretty wide range of spring weights that we can use with this. And this car, because of what we're gonna be doing with this car, we want it to have lots of flexibility and the Foxes have lots of suspension travel available because they are designed exactly for this chassis. So this will be a great dual duty use kind of application for Ron. Besides our Fox coilovers, the next big thing on the table here that we're gonna do is upgraded sway bars. So this is our FM sway bar, just the front. We are also gonna be installing the rear, of course, so that way we have balanced handling. But these have adjustable end link mounting spots on the ends of the bar so that way we can really dial in the handling bias so that way we can make sure we don't have too much oversteer or too much understeer and it comes with new polyurethane bushings. Along with the sway bars we also have some of our adjustable end links. So like the factory end links they do have ball joints that have boots on them to make sure that they're well protected and should live a good long time but alongside that they also have adjustable centers. So we can actually get the length of these end links dialed in just perfectly for the car before we get everything locked down. Besides that, we're gonna do a little bit of preventative maintenance on this car as well, because we've noticed that some of the ball joints and the boots for the ball joints are worn out as well. So I have some new lower ball joints, some new tie rod ends. These ones in particular are the R package style. So they actually help to reduce bump steer on cars that will be lowered thanks to our Fox suspension. And then new boots for the upper control arms, since those ones you can't really remove, or at least it's much more difficult to remove those ones, and the ball joints themselves are in good shape. Besides that, we're also gonna be replacing the eccentric bolts or alignment bolts, because these do wear down over time, and it makes it difficult to align the car specifically how we want it to be when everything's all said and done. That is a very important part of a suspension system is getting your alignment dialed in. So we wanna make sure we have a good setup that will allow us to reach the numbers we're looking for. This car needs shocks, something fierce. It does have pretty good cornering ability and it does have really good steering feel. So nothing is like broken or loose necessarily, but these shocks are so worn out and possibly even blown that the whole chassis is a bit wobbly, a bit jittery. Because all that's happening right now is the car is mostly just riding on the springs and the shocks aren't doing much to control it. So I'm looking forward to putting the Foxes on because I think that'll make a huge improvement 
in the way that this car feels, both comfort and getting a bit more confidence going into corners. You know, for a stock Miata, this handles exactly like I would expect. Still a ton of fun. You don't have to do anything wild or crazy to make these cars enjoyable. But you can make them that much better if you turn it up, of course, which we're planning to do. Upgrading the suspension components on Ron is really going to transform the handling prowess of the car and make it hand like a razor edge tool on the track as well as being a lot of fun on the street. So let's go ahead, get stuck into it and get these parts installed on the car. We've got Nick working to install our new parts on Project Ron. First thing we need to do is get the wheels out of the way and start taking off the old crusty suspension. First off, we'll disconnect the factory inlinks, then disconnect the lower ball joints since we'll be replacing those during our install. The next step is to pull the factory sway bars out of the way. We'll be replacing them with shiny new upgraded FM bits. Once everything is disconnected, out comes the factory billies. We're going to be doing a few maintenance items as well. To make sure that we get the most out of our new suspension, we're installing new eccentric bolts on all four corners while the suspension is apart. Before we wrap up the installation of the new Fox coilovers, we need to replace the old lower ball joints, tie rod ends, and add boots to the upper ball joints because the old stuff was worn out and needed to be replaced anyway. Here's a set of our FM exclusive Fox racing coilovers that we'll be dropping in. These fit great, and the red and bronze are a nice complement to Ron's burgundy finish. We'll be setting these at the recommended base settings for now, but we'll probably dial them in a little bit later on after we've got everything else on the car. Gone are the spindly factory sway bars, and now we have the FM adjustable sway bars installed both front and rear. We're going with a fairly neutral handling bias for now, and those adjustable end links will allow us to remove any preload in the sway bars from left to right. And lastly, now that we've got all the new shiny bits installed, we're going to index the bushings before we tighten up all the nuts and bolts, and then we'll go take the car for a test ride. Afterwards, we'll get an alignment to make sure that everything's dialed in just right. All right, we're out and about driving the car now that we've got the new Fox suspension installed along with FM sway bars and a few other bits, including the R package tie rod ends and new ball joints and things like that. And initial impressions, this is really good. We've gone a long way from having a really tired stock suspension that basically had two decades worth of driving on it to something brand new, fresh, and actually intended to be a nice driving performance suspension kit and you'll see here in just a second with a few other shots where the amount of body roll is significantly reduced the turn and feel is dramatically better and this car just goes wherever you point the wheel it's not dramatic at all it just it just goes also gone is the really bouncy jouncy stock blown Bilsteins the ride quality now with upgraded performance parts and pieces is actually nicer than what it was before with the worn out stock suspension. And that's a pretty common trend if you're running around on stock suspension at this point, you know, a decade or two. Now this feels like a Miata that I can chuck around the corners. It feels like it wants to go play. It feels like it wants me to go through that corner just a little bit faster. One of the fun things about doing upgraded sway bars and suspension bits like this is that now your steering wheel doesn't feel like it just wants to 
slowly wobble through corners or through turns or anything like that. As soon as you move the steering wheel just a little bit, the car immediately points that direction. There's no more hesitation or delay. It's one part preventative maintenance, but also another part performance related. We decided to upgrade to the R package tie rod ends for this vehicle, and partly because we didn't know the history of the last ones as far as if they'd ever been replaced, but also because now that the car's been lowered, having the R package tie rod ends helps to reduce bump steer. That's something that can happen whenever you lower a car because of the new suspension geometry. It'll actually induce a bit more bump steer anytime you hit potholes or bumps. So having the R package tie rod ends does help to reduce bump steer and make the car just more predictable going over a wide variety of surfaces. The last part that we need to do now that we have the installation components installed is a few last little tweaks. We're going to change the ride height just a little bit to get it right where we want it and then we're going to go in for an alignment. I can already tell that because my steering wheel is off a little bit and I know that because we've changed the ride height anyway, the alignment has changed. It does need to be updated. So we'll go get that taken care of here after a little bit and make sure we can get that dialed in. Now that we've completed the suspension upgrades on Ron, it's handling better than ever and feels great around the corners, as well as everywhere else on the street. So, now that we've completed leg day, we need to upgrade the sneakers. In the next episode, we're gonna talk about wheels and tire upgrades as well as brakes. So that way we can make this car stop as well as it goes. Of course, we wouldn't be able to have this build series without the help of our friends and sponsors, Moss Miata, DEI, Willwood Brakes, Cypher Auto, Hard Dog Fabrication, Coyo Radiators, and Toyo Tires. Thank you all very much for your support and lending parts to be able to make this build as exhilarating as possible. I'd also like to extend a thank you to our customers and all of our friends in the Miata community. Thank you all very much for your support. Join us for the next episode. Be sure to subscribe, hit like, share, all of those kinds of things, so that way you'll catch us on the next episode of Project Run.